It's National Women's Health Week, started on Mother's Day. So today we are going to take a look at endometrial cancer, which is the most commonly diagnosed gynecologic cancer. About 50,000 American women are diagnosed with it every year. Joining us now with more is Dr. Jennifer McEachran, who is a gynecologic oncologist with Catholic Health Partners. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're relying on you just to bring us some of the basics of what endometrial cancer is. Sure, of course. And uh, just to echo what you said, um, endometrial cancer is the most common uh, gynecologic cancer uh, diagnosed in women. And like you said, um, it's impacting huge volumes of women um, throughout the country every year. Um, it is the most, the eighth most common cause of cancer death in women, which is also, a, a, you know, a very important um, important reminder to us that although this cancer is um, common, it is affecting um, and causing mortality throughout the country. Um, one of the biggest things, and what I want to, what I really want to, um, you know, spread the word on and get out, is that endometrial cancer can often be diagnosed very early. And the reason for that is it's very hard for this cancer to hide. And this cancer often presents with abnormal bleeding. And that abnormal bleeding um, can be abnormal vaginal bleeding um, throughout any part of your cycle. And most importantly, bleeding after menopause. These are big, big um, concerning factors and things that should really prompt a quick visit to your gynecologist if you suffer from any of these symptoms, as when this disease is diagnosed early, it's very treatable. So those are the main symptoms. Anything else that you should be on the lookout for? Um, other symptoms, um, which are uh, which would be concerning, are significant changes in weight and significant changes in in um, bowel habits. Um, unfortunately, these symptoms are not exclusive to endometrial cancer, and they can be seen with many other conditions. But they are things that you would definitely uh, want to reach out and seek care with uh, your primary care physician or a gynecologist for. But specifically re related to. Um, uterine cancer, the biggest presenting symptom by far is abnormal bleeding. And just to give you kind of a perspective on that, of all the women that present with bleeding after menopause, about one in 10 or 10 percent of these women will be diagnosed with endometrial cancer. Mm, you, so you're talking about menopause right now. Does age play a role in this? Age does play a role. Um, the most common age of diagnosis of endometrial cancer is really in the late 50s, early 60s. However, over the past 10 years, we are seeing a big, big increase in this disease in younger women. And the reason for that is because this disease is highly associated with obesity. And as everyone I'm sure is aware, as the obesity uh, epidemic really um, increases and surges throughout the country, that's making this disease now a disease of younger women when in the past it was a disease that we really exclusively saw in a postmenopausal population. And now um, over the past 10 years, we have seen longitudinally as the rate of obesity obesity in the country increases, we're noticing big increases in endometrial cancer, and we're seeing big spikes um, in this disease in women um, below the age of 40. And of course, that brings into a lot of other, uh, brings into question a lot of other important issues, including a lot of these women still wish to retain their fertility. Um, so this disease is becoming more of a challenge over time because we're seeing big increases, and especially in our younger patient population. Any idea how, how this develops? Yes, actually, endometrial cancer is one of the diseases that um, we have. We uh, we really understand understand the epidemiology of very well. This cancer is an estrogen driven disease. So, women with high estrogen states, um, for example, the most common cause of high estrogen states in women is actually obesity, and that's because um, adipose tissue or fatty tissue it creates estrogen. So, in addition to our normal baseline estrogen that we have from our ovaries, which is good estrogen that we need for bone health, for um, cardiovascular health. This extra source of estrogen that comes from the adipose tissue builds up. And what it does is it causes an increase in the growth and the thickness of the lining of the uterus. And as that lining increases from increasing estrogen exposure, what happens is the cells eventually kind of outgrow each other and they become more and more disordered, as you can imagine, from this constant proliferation from estrogen, and then ethnometrial cancer will eventually develop in this setting. Wow, so, so weight is a risk factor. Weight is a big risk factor. It, it, we're really finding it to be one of the strongest risk factors. When you talk, when we're talking about endometrial cancer, is, is it the same as uterine cancer? 
That's a good question. And, and it is, and that's a confusing topic that I talk about with patients very often. So uterine cancer includes any cancer that comes from the uterus. And the uterus really has two main parts. It has the endometrial lining, which is the lining of the uterus, which is what, as women, is shed every month during a menstrual cycle. There, then there is the wall of the uterus, which is a muscular, um, a muscular tissue, and that actually can create different cancers can arise in that muscular lining. However, they're much, much less common, and we see them much less frequently. Endometrial cancer really represents about 92% of all cancers that come from the uterus. So in general, a lot of people do throw around those terms interchangeably, um, but truly an endometrial cancer is from the endometrial lining, the lining of the uterus, and a uterine and a, a sarcoma was arises from the muscular part of the uterus again much less common and um, with different symptoms so really the big thing in my world that i see most commonly and i treat most commonly is an endometrial cancer oh, let's talk about treatment how do you treat it so treatment for endometrial cancer is um is well studied and very standardized and it's really focused on removing the uterus which of course is the source of the uh, the source of the cancer when we remove the uterus we've removed the cervix the fallopian tubes and the ovaries and we actually do this in many many cases um, with minimally invasive surgery which means surgery through tiny tiny incisions um, and oftentimes we do do the surgery robotically as well uh, the benefit to this is that we avoid large incisions which lead to um, prolonged healing and can lead to complications just such as wound complications and really um, just as far as um, patient, patient comfort and patient recovery, minimally invasive surgery offers a lot of benefits that we are able to, um, that we are able to give the patient and perform an equally sound oncologic operation. We, Once you have doctor, surgery, just talking about younger women getting this, what yeah. about younger women being treated? Can they still have children? Yes, that's a great question. And, uh, and as I said, unfortunately, I'm seeing a big increase in my um, younger patient population. Um, and many of these women wish to retain their fertility and wish to have future childbearing. And luckily, as I had mentioned previously, most cases of endometrial cancer do show up early. So because of that, we are often able to offer the patients non-surgical options. This would include different types of hormonal therapy to try to combat that estrogen response. So for example, in many cases, we try to give these women high dose progesterone medications to combat that estrogen response. And then we follow them for, um, to monitor for response. And in about 75% of women, you will actually have a response and a clearance of the cancer. Mm. And those women we allow to attempt childbearing relatively soon. We encourage them to um, attempt pregnancy uh, very soon. And unfortunately that is because this cancer can recur. So after childbearing, we still recommend that these patients go forward with removal of the uterus, which is called a hysterectomy. But um, we have had a lot of advances in the, the treatment of women that wish to maintain fertility. Very, very quickly, because we're almost out of time. How do I lower my chances of getting this? And that's the most important question. Um, the biggest thing that we can do as a community is one, awareness of, of your menstrual cycles and awareness um, and identification of any abnormal patterns early and seeking care for that. And the biggest thing you can do is maintaining a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle. That healthy weight will dramatically decrease your risk of endometrial cancer. Well, doctor, wow, thank you so much. Wonderful, important information. I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.